Hello and welcome back to Three Oceans. We're doing something a little different today's video. We're going to take a look at the 85 liberals who are guaranteed not to survive the next election. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this in more than one video. It's one thing for the polls to show that most liberals will be wiped off the electoral map come the next election. It's another thing entirely to dig a little deeper and to see exactly who will vanish and just how badly their demise will be. So what we're going to do is start with the small fries first and work our way up to the big fish. And believe me, there are some pretty big surprises coming. So follow this list through to the end. I guarantee you it will be worth your time. So for those small fries, Prize who never really got caught up in any controversies and didn't make any waves, I've prepared a quick video montage. It comes out to only 90 seconds really. But before we start that montage, I want to first peel two names off that list because the coming loss of these backbenchers is quite significant. Those two MPs that I'm peeling off would be Brendan Hanley for the Yukon and Michael McLeod for the Northwest Territories. With Nunavut already being a non-liberal writing by the way of the NDP's Lori Yidlou, this would rid all three of Canada's territories of liberal rule. And the significance is in the native vote. A quarter of the Yukon's population is native, while the Northwest Territories, half of that entire territory is native. So Trudeau has successfully alienated one of his core bases and now He's about to pay the ultimate price. And now let's get our montage out of the way. Keep in mind, you will not see these backbenchers ever again. Now we move on to the juicy stuff. Sandwiched between the backbenchers and the ministers are the trolls. Many of these trolls are lowly backbenchers to begin with who've gone nowhere so far and are likely going nowhere in the future. Some might even be former ministers. They got their names added to this list simply for being complete and total idiots and bringing nothing positive to their roles. So let's see which of these liberal trolls are guaranteed to perish in the next election. Let's kick things off with Ken Hardy. Most non-liberal voters see Ken as unhinged and there are very strong grounds to support that argument. Take for example the time he accused Pierre Polyev of inspiring a mass shooting. He got reined in by none other than Karina Gould. Is, is that a yesterday bias? suggested a shooting in Winnipeg had something to do with Pierre Polyev's attitude of burn everything down. He tweeted about that. Is that an appropriate thing for a liberal MP to be equating a no, violent it's, shooting? It's not. Are you going to talk to Mr. Hardy about this? Uh, yes. Yeah, but it is absolutely inappropriate, and that's not something that anyone should be suggesting uh, from any political party. So what are you going to say to him when you speak uh, to him? Just what I told you. So. Ken, like other liberal backbench bitches, loves taking pot shots at Polyev in the hopes he'll one day land a coveted cabinet position. And not to be outdone, even by himself, here's another bad take from Ken that not only reinforces why the liberals aren't fit to lead, but that they suffer from a complete and total lack of self-awareness. <laughs> This next MP, I'll confess, I've always had trouble pronouncing his last name, so I'll give it one shot. Irek Kuzmarik. That's it. Sorry, Irek. Irek's a little more innocuous than Ken, but he's in that same league of maturity. Check out this behavior in committee. 
with respect to the motion yesterday, as I stated yesterday, my ruling was I believe it was. Mr. Mr. Chair, I no, asked, I Mr. asked that question. Chuck, let I me finish, please. Of the clerk. I will I stop. Asked the question of the clerk. You and do I not, to hear Mr. From the clerk. Kuzmirchuk, you've been around for a long time. You know and very know well the rules the that you do not you, you do not address questions to the clerk. You know that very well, and it appears you're just being uh, disruptive at this time. And of course, what would a liberal troll be without turning tragedy into a political point? Finally, we all know a picture tells a thousand words. So let's finish up with Eirik by directing your attention to the look on Trudeau's face while Eirik gushes to him over lunch. Typically, women aren't really known for their trolling ways, and that's why I'm happy to bring up Ikra Khalid. Now, if you thought Eirik's behavior in committee was something, you ain't seen nothing yet. Check out Ikra's outburst here, as this truly is the stuff of legend. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, uh, former Liberal Minister Baines. Former Liberal Minister Baines, as a Minister of the Crown, you're responsible for to Parliament for all parliamentary appropriations under your department, are you not, in addition to appointments? Uh, when all ministers set budgets, they need to be approved by Parliament, that is correct. Right, you're accountable for that. So you're accountable for every dollar that's spent that you've out, that was allocated. I'm going to ask you, first of all, about your appointment of the chair, Annette Bashar, who at this committee said three times that she didn't apply, that you phoned her twice to ask her to serve. And then, Point of order, Mr. Chair, she applied the after that. Sorry, I'm sorry, not Mr. Burke. A debate, Mr. Hold, hold on, I do have a point of order. I do have to hear. Okay, we'll start all over again. The, then. the point of order. Yes, Mr. Dre. The, the member, the particular person he's talking That's about, has debate. corrected the record. Has corrected the record no, in hasn't. writing. Thank you for so much. No, she hasn't. Well, no, she hasn't. Okay. No, she hasn't. If you will listen. Okay, you will get the gentlemen, so I'll stop. Start all this over is clearly a, a point uh, of of debate. Uh, no, it isn't. It's a, it's. I'll, I'll just remind the government members that I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, uh, You're a government member. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like needless point orders on either side. So my, my point, though, is not just to highlight that it's a government member issue. It's not. It happens occasionally on both sides when debate gets heated. But you always have the immediately right of reply uh, after Mr. Perkins. It is you, in fact, Mr. Drouet. And um, I, I hope that if you extend in your side, courtesy on the official opposition, they will do the same, and if they do not do so, I will censure them as well. Uh, I am going to back up the clock uh, for Mr. Perkins. Uh, you can restart your question, Mr. Perkins, not the time, just your questions. I'm backing up the clock, not not from the top, but you can start your question oh, from the top. He interrupted me before I even got but my Mr. question. Mr. Perkins, I'm, I said I'm backing the up the top. clock. You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Baines, you uh, phoned, according to Annette Bashar, and you phoned her twice to ask her to serve. Is that correct? Because that's what she said at the committee. As I have stated um, in my previous I, I don't want a dissertation in, in on the appointment process. It's a simple yes or no. You phoned her twice, yes or no. As I stated in my previous testimony at uh, Industry Committee, um, I reached out to a number of people during my tenure as a minister and asked him to participate in this open, transparent, merit-based. Mr. Mr. Perkins, I have a point of order. I've stopped the clock. Yes, please. Uh, yes, thank please. you uh, very much. I believe that uh, Ms. Ver Verschuren, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name, did uh, Again, this correct is, her this, 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 Okay, I just ruled on this. This is not it, a it point of order. Sense. We will stop. start from the top. It does the not make sense. Okay. It does not make All right. sense this for is us to continue we will start from I to endeavored harass at, a witness uh, miss, 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 on this. Miss, miss, the, the evidence Khalid. is there, so I'm just not sure why. It just... She applied after the fall. All right, Mr. Perkins, Mr. 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 Perkins, and you'll Let's learn something Mr. for a Mr. Why Perkins. don't you want to learn anything? Mr. Perkins, I will remind the cover up coalition? Mr. Perkins, Mr. Perkins, I remind you before, before I remind you. You should. I take exception to your cover up. Chair. We are going to suspend Absolutely. for a minute. When she's not busy losing her mind in the most inappropriate of ways, Ikra keeps herself busy by accusing non-Muslims of Islamophobia, men of being misogynists, and whites of being, well, you get the hint by now. Well, 
Since we're talking about the female trolls on Trudeau's team, let's talk about Jennifer O'Connell. Jen is Canada's first mentally disabled MP. Rather than talk about it, let me run a highlight reel so you can see for yourself. I'm just curious if she thinks there should be consequences or, uh, or retromand for members of this house who meet with known Nazis who spread uh, misinformation, disinformation, glorify the Holocaust, who speak against uh, uh, anti-Muslim rhetoric. Uh, I'm just curious if she's talking about online hate and privacy of Canadians and regulation. Does she condemn her actions by meeting with a known Nazi uh, in this country who spout anti-Muslim rhetoric? The Prime Minister has put on blackface so many times. He has degraded black people. He literally put a banana in his pants and you have the audacity, you have the audacity to stand and look at me as a black woman and ask about my meeting with another member of the European Parliament. That is within my job description. I do not have to, I do not have to approve of everything that another member believes in in order to have the decency to have meetings with with other individuals your prime minister this prime minister denigrated black men by putting a banana in his pants shame on every member over there that does not chastise them if this were any other country he would not be leading and he would not have the moral authority to lead he would not have that moral authority order this is here. Sorry, uh, excuse me. I have the floor, and I'd appreciate. Excuse me. And I have the floor. You came here deliberately to cause conflict. That is excuse your role. Me, that I'm a member in your of role. Parliament. This has been a Dr. peaceful Lewis, community Dr. until you Dr. intervene. Lewis, and that is how you speak to your Dr. colleague. Lewis, get out of here. You said very eloquent. Very eloquent. You said very that eloquent. I'm not. You are not going to, to bully you us. You are Dr. not Lewis. going to bully us. Canadians are going to hear from the witnesses, and we demand. That. Dr. Lewis, Ms. O'Connell had the floor. I think we can all respect each other. It's the standard practice here in this committee. Let's not bring what's occurring in other committees into this room. I'd like the opportunity for you to actually answer the question because as we've seen, conservatives seem to only be interested in their own clips and not actually providing information. Mr. Vilmier laughs. I think he'd prefer I make him a sandwich and allow the, the work to be done by the men in this room as he uh, had indicated to me. Um, but I think what's important, I'll stick to the actually doing this work as someone who served on ENSICOP, who's been looking at foreign interference. What, point of order, firm. Chair. Point of order. Ain't she something? And it just so happens she's besties with the number one troll on our list. But we've still got four more names on the wall of shame. So hang in there because the next anti-winner we're profiling is Marco Mendicino. Of the trolls on our list, what sets Marco apart is his complete and utter disdain for charter rights. Here's a perfect example. The dangerous criminal activity occurring away from the TV cameras and social media posts was real and organized. It could have been deadly for citizens, protesters, and officers. And how about I tag in Pierre Polyev himself so that he can list off Marco's many lies. Paul, Bernard, Paul Bernardo uh, was moved from a maximum security penitentiary to a medium security penitentiary. And Minister Mendicino said he was shocked, totally shocked. And now we know that he was informed three months earlier and did absolutely nothing. And at least two emails that he got from correction services informing him of this move. Uh, and then after the fact, he claimed that he knew absolutely nothing about it. This is not the first time Mr. Mendicino has lied to Canadians. I have a list. You need a list because it's hard to keep track. He lied saying that the police had asked him to bring in the Emergencies Act. They did not. He misled a federal judge by backdating documents. He admitted in committee that the RCMP was using spyware to gain information on Canadians. He lied that the safe uh, third country agreement was working. He claimed it was impossible to close Roxham Road, something that has now happened. Um, he claimed that his amendments would not ban hunting rifles. And then later on, he had to admit that they did ban hunting rifles and reverse those amendments. He said that uh, 
the RC that the uh, CSIS report on Michael Chong's family being targeted by a former government did never left CSIS. We now know that the documents went from CSIS to the Prime Minister's National Security Advisor. He claimed there were no more Chinese controlled police stations in Canada. Now we know there are at least two. And he lied about his knowledge that Paul Bernardo was being moved from a maximum security penitentiary to a medium security penitentiary, something that he has the power to stop. Uh, so he lies and lies and lies and lies. He lies about suspending the civil liberties of Canadians. He lies about banning hunting rifles for law-abiding Indigenous Canadians and farmers. He lies about uh, Canadian parliamentarians being targeted by foreign intimidation. And now he's lied about his knowledge and role in moving Paul Bernardo from a maximum security penitentiary to a medium security penitentiary. These are too many lies. It's one lie too many. It is time for Marco Mendicino to resign. Marco's a total D-bag, and I think we've already given him more time than he's worth. That said, let's look at our resident Olympian, Adam Van Coverden. Adam, like his master Trudeau, doesn't take well to being called out. Have a look. Unfortunately, those reflexes that took him to the Olympics didn't carry over well to politics. For seven years, the Liberals knew Jasper was a tinderbox. Damning testimony has proved the Minister of Environment's negligence. He failed to do everything he could to protect homes, business, and this beloved national park. To stop a raging wildfire, you need two things. Remove the heat and apply water. We know without a minute, with beyond a doubt that the minister did neither. A tiny fraction of the dead trees were removed and shockingly, firefighters were even turned away. How much incompetence does it take, get, take to get fired from this Liberal cabinet? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for his collaboration on the Environment Committee, where we have been hearing about the circumstances that led to the Jasper wildfire situation, Mr. Speaker. But however, however I would like to point out that the over-politicization of this issue, the tabloidization of it, and what they're saying on social media has been absolutely unacceptable, Mr. Speaker. As a result of some of those tweets, there are public servants who receive death threats from people who are, you know, enraged under these conservatives and, and their, their attempts to politicize this issue. Mr. Speaker, a, a, a natural disaster is not a political issue, and our government has done everything that we could to prevent the wildfire. The Honourable Member from Portage... Once Adam's gone, we'll never have to suffer through another one of these terrible suits. He didn't read the report. It's obvious, because on page one of the report, it says right here that Canadians will see a net gain receiving more from the Canada carbon rebate than the total amount they pay in the federal fuel charge. Mr. Speaker, just flip to page seven. It's a bit long. I know the member of parliament might have a, a bit of a difficult time with a, you know, a document like this, uh, but the meaningless slogans don't matter. What does matter is that, broadly speaking, our updated estimates show larger net gains for average households right across income quintiles in backstop provinces compared to the previous district distributional analysis. If he's going to quote the book, Madam, uh, Mr. Speaker, he ought to read it. It's right here. Page I can one. bring it over if you'd like. Page one. Just going to ensure that we, uh, of course, uh, treat all members with uh, the respect and dignity uh, that all members deserve. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Well, Speaker, not only did I read the report, I actually paid some attention when I dressed myself this morning, unlike that uh, uh, scene over there. <laughs> I, I, the honourable member uh, knows that uh, order. Well, now we're down to our last two trolls, and I know you've already guessed who I've saved for very last. So in case you haven't guessed who the second last culprit is, it's Ryan Turnbull. This chud of a man has zero charisma, which makes his trolling that much harder to digest. Take, for example, this very weak attempt at an offhand remark. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, while the Conservative leader was having a self-aggrandizing, goodwill hunting delusion in an apple orchard, <laughs> our government was focused on stabilizing food prices for middle class Canadians. By calling on the five grocery chain CEOs uh, to produce action plans that would make a difference for, for Canadians. Our government is now uh, tracking and monitoring and holding the grocery chains accountable uh, while the Conservatives talk turkey, we'll talk results for Canadians. 
And now here is Lurch Adams himself doing his part to perpetuate the myth that conservatives will be making pro-choice illegal. It's appalling that we're having demonstrations here on Parliament Hill. Uh, obviously everyone has a right to demonstrate, but what we're seeing here is um, a pro-life group or an anti-abortion group that's protesting here on the Hill. We've come out to show our support for the opposite. We believe unequivocally that women should have the right to choose, uh, that their body is their right and that abortion is health care. And we will never uh, go back on that as a Liberal Party. We stand firm and strong uh, with women in solidarity with them uh, to make sure that women's reproductive rights are protected now and into the future Believe forever. It. And now it's time to wrap this big giant mess up in a neat little bow and finish strong by bringing up the number one troll on the liberal roster, Mark Gerritsen. Mark is easily the worst of the batch. Not only is he a sniveling bootlicker, eager at a crack at a cabinet post, he's also a shameless liar. And like most liberals, he's also a terminal hypocrite. Check this out. But my point is, Madam Speaker, my point is, my point is, the member from Calgary Nose Hill has blocked me on Twitter because she is obviously afraid of me providing her with information that she doesn't want to see. Now, what kind of elected official is that, Madam Speaker? Yes, you heard that right. The MP who is notorious for turning off his comments is complaining about that. Mark has a very bad habit of seeking out attention and then completely panicking when he succeeds and finds way more of it than he bargained for. That little stunt, of course, led to the threat of a lawsuit and Gerritsen rapidly retracted his statement and issued a public apology to Cat Canada. The incident appears to have jolted him into deleting his tweet in which he refers to Pierre Polyev as a dick. The irony of Gerritsen's nature is that his quest to get a promotion is the very reason he's likely never to get one. The man is the walking definition of a liability. He just can't help himself. Here's another example. The problem is, what party line? The Liberal Party's or the Communist Party of China's? I call upon the government to step up and provide strong investigatory powers to the Special Rapporteur so that Mr. Johnson can unearth names and evidence of foreign interference in Canada and especially in Vancouver and Toronto during the last two elections. Canadians deserve and demand to know what's going on. They want to see concrete action taken to protect our political and democratic processes and institutions from foreign manipulation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. If I understood that member correctly, Mr. Speaker, he just, told, he just asked and questioned whether I was towing a Liberal Party line or a Communist Party of China line. My response to that member is, let's go outside and say it to me in public where you do not have the uh, a parliamentary privilege that you have in this room. So that wraps it up for the first part of our journey. Next up will be the present cabinet members and some of those big names that aren't coming back. You'll be shocked to hear just how badly they were expected to lose. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch the next part. And thank you very much for watching. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit threeoceans.ca. Once again, that's threeoceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.